Hello indie game fans, we have an interesting week of new indie games which seems quite simulation heavy, but a couple of interesting narrative, rhythm, co-op and puzzle titles in the mix as well for this edition of indie gaming this week. Mundown has one of the most striking art styles, being a self-described lovingly hand-penciled horror tale set in the Alps, where the sepia tones and otherworldly designs are a sight to behold. The tale of his grandfather dying in a mysterious death in a fire has brought our protagonist back to the scene of the crime, but something old and diabolical is haunting the inhabitants and will be sure to creep you out. Almost featured Fate of Kai in my video on upcoming hand-drawn titles since this comic book adventure game looks fantastic, but since the launch was near, I saved it for this video. It has you adventuring and attempting to get our protagonist to the castle, where you control the thoughts of the character in-game rather than their actions, looking like it could be neat. I love minimalistic, chill puzzle games, and one that fits the bill is Sizable, a title that allows you to manipulate the size of the objects on screen in order to progress. This ranges from increasing the weight of an object to activate a button, or to shrink the sun such that the season turns to winter, with an awesome low poly look that will please for sure. I can't do this anymore. Nothing I can do to change your mind. Now you are welcome to try. We can figure this out, I think. You know, back home they call you the pig farmer. Almost missed the release of this, but Adios is an interesting first-person narrative title where you play as a pig farmer who is fed up with having to work for the mob to help them dispose of bodies, bringing this subject up to the hitman who then spends the day with you, with the overhanging conclusion that if he does not manage to convince you to continue working for the mob, that he would have to put a bullet in your head. And it is this tale of that very conversation and events. So... This is it then. I can't take back what I've done. But I got the notion, and the notion's got me. So, least I can do is uh, tell you adios. Adios, friendo. The diversity of life on Earth is staggering. We share the planet with tens of millions of creatures, all with different sizes, shapes, and ways of life. Ecosystem translates organic life and all its detail into a digital medium. I remember coming across Ecosystem quite a while back, where it's an ecosystem simulator that allows you to observe and alter the evolution of creatures, all moving according to in-game physics, where you have the power of a god in altering and maintaining this delicate balance. It looks a lot better than when it was first shown off, although it does still look otherworldly and weird, but primed for early access, and I'm keen to see how the gameplay systems work out. ...into every limb in their body. They pursue their own goals, driven by their instincts, in a shared environment where they swim, graze, have children, and prey on each other. And as in our world, the infinite varieties of life are the fruit of evolution. The fittest creatures pass on their genes to the next generation, and over time, a world of strange and unique creatures is born. The steward of this world is you. Place plants and build caves and reefs. 
design an environment that fulfills each species' nutritional needs, adjust the shape of creatures' bodies and how they swim, decide where their hunting grounds are and how they migrate over their lives. Everything is part of a system, and every system is a balance. The richness of life is in your hands. Just one bigger release that might be of interest this week being Saviors of Sapphire Wings and Stranger of Sword City Revisited Bundle. It's a very strange 2 for 1 combination of titles, both being remasters of titles that were best known on the Vita, but they do look like very classic JRPGs in the vein of titles like Action Odyssey and Shin Megami Tensei. Smaller Games of the Week kicks off with Dead Survival, a title from a Korean developer which might just capture the millennial or Gen Z experience. The world is big and scary, so our protagonist has decided to live her life from her bed where it is safe, so a very cute and cheeky title that might give us all some hope. Chain is certainly targeted towards a certain type of people like me who grew up with 90s real-time strategy games with everything from the look, character portraits and units looking like they're out of OG Starcraft or Command and & Conquer and earns a spot because of that. Can't Drive This is an interesting multiplayer racing puzzle hybrid where one player drives the vehicle and the other builds the track in real time, with four player split screen co op looking very chaotic and could be fun. I missed the launch of Chess Knight Viking Lands last year, probably dismissing it as just another chess title, but upon closer inspection, this uses chess movement in unique arenas and maps, so something a little different which gets an Xbox port this week.
Love the pixel art and theme of Dairy Thief, an endless runner where you have to milk all the cows, looking simple but pleasant and for free, why not? Dark Water Slime Invader is a curious looking action platformer title about a girl and her grandmother working together to protect the village from invading slimes, with a cool look and decent looking action. The creepy horror title Duck launches on Switch as the complete edition, bundling together all DLCs and is not to be missed for fans of the genre. We have all seen the colour scheme of Dark World before, using red, black and white, similar to something like Downwell, but this is an action platforming title that does look pretty well made. The world is filled with creatures that are all some variants of dogs, so it's an interesting theme with good looking action and could be a hidden gem to check out. I believe that this game is pronounced as Easy 2 on Reboot R, a previously web-only rhythm game which has since been picked up and rebooted on Steam, looking pretty hardcore and for fans of the genre.
As advertised, Gun Skaters is a local multiplayer action title where you fire guns while moving around on ice skates where the movement looks challenging but looks neat with a variety of modes. I love co-op titles and action puzzle games, so of course, Magic Twins got my attention, where two witches must use their chromatic powers to defeat the color elementals, looking really fun with a friend. The growing subgenre of the roguelite auto battler continues with Outcasts of Orion, a sci fi theme entry which looks alright, with some retro visuals that kind of looks like Black Chain covered above. A wonderfully whimsical title is Pull Up Box by Box, a co-op puzzle platformer where players must work together in order to progress. Always a fan of this genre so I hope it is good, with it being cute and family friendly and a good one to pick up if you have kids. QV is an action puzzle platformer that launched on Switch last year, coming to Steam this week and has reviewed well, looking lighthearted, fun and well made. A new threat darkens the sky. Time to raise the heroes of the old wars. Train your soldiers to become powerful followers. Find and use artifacts from ancient wars. Face creatures and demons of the underworld.
and free Monteria from the yoke of darkness. If you love heroes of might and magic like me, a title that may be of interest is Shields of Loyalty, looking retro but could be strategically deep enough to be of interest. Finest turn-based action with strategic depth. Over 120 unique units with special abilities. Three islands with different settings and animations. More than 20 well-designed and unique levels. Shields of Loyalty. Signs of the Sojourner was one of the hidden gems of last year, being a narrative card game about conversations and communication, getting console ports this week and must be checked out. Looking action title is Space Otter Charlie, where heroes are searching for a new hospitable planet for animals, giving me a little bit of a Lost Vikings vibe, and it's a neat, smaller title of interest. Our dynasty was forged in blood. My father took what he wanted by force. He was cruel and vindictive. Not a good man, but a great man. Infamous, hated, feared. Now he is dead. And they look to me to rule. I will not be a tyrant like my ancestors. Star Dynasties is a neat-looking 4X strategy title on a grand scale, similar to something like Crusader Kings in space, so definitely one of interest. Drunk of a brother off to the right house. My vassals will find me an honorable ruler, so long as they respect my authority. And if they don't, well, mother always said I could hold a grudge. I'll organize a lavish feast for our dear neighbors. Then I'll seduce their heir. Perhaps I'll whisper some secrets to my new admirer. Scandalous, powerful secrets. The kind that could topple systems. Why kill your enemies when you can have someone else do it for you? This is my dynasty now, and I will lead it my way. Sumatra Fate of Yendi is a neat looking traditional point and click adventure game that looks so retro, getting a Switch port this week.
I don't normally cover visual novels, but I have to say, the last act did impress me with the choice of music for the trailer, the hand-drawn art style and the theme of a relationship between an aspiring theatre actress and a ghost looking to be quite the neat package. Last words before I crush your short-lived democracy. Ah, uh, yes. Can I try that again? <gasps> Congratulations on being elected, Your Excellency. We kick off the top 5 with Rogue State Revolution, a simulation strategy title where you're the newly elected leader of a new democracy and have to govern and manage in order to survive. There are more fantastical elements like pumping your budget into making a bipedal mech to defend yourself, but certainly a title of interest. This developer did also make the similar Rogue State in 2015, so it does seem to be a natural evolution of that and should be great. Congratulations on being elected, Your Excellency. Let's appoint ministers to push your new policies through. But keep them on side. You don't want to step on your Minister of Defense's toes with this city-sized meteor approaching. Congratulations on being elected, Your Excellency. Now how shall we deal with the Oryx problem? Tigers! Okay. How will you get rid of the tigers? Also, our people in Rumai are starving. We've lost power to Karif, and don't forget the rebels are moving on the palace as we speak. Any last words? Ah, uh, yes. Look behind you. A 
second term. You've done well, Your Excellency. I think I can do better. Red Ronin did make my best upcoming Indie Games of the Month video, so here we are with the release. This action puzzle title got my attention ever since it was first revealed, since I do love my sliding puzzle games like Slayer Week Camp, but instead you are a bloodthirsty warrior seeking revenge. It's not as simple or straightforward as it seems, since enemies do move as well, giving me a little bit of a Katana Zero meets Crypt of the Necrodancer vibe, so definitely a title of interest for the week. Are you bold, passionate, and open for an exciting new career? We provide a perfect opportunity to kick off your very own enterprise and reach for the stars, full-time and permanent. The daily responsibilities of El Capo would be leading and growing a team of dedicated professionals. Cartel Tycoon has a very interesting theme, having you play as Kingpin in a fictionalized Latin America setting, where it is about the drug trade and the business that surrounds that. Building the production structure and optimizing it. fostering collaboration with internal and external partners, and managing public relations. On top of the management aspects, there are rival cartels and the law in your way, with what seems to be an interesting progression system where if your leader character dies, a lower ranking member will rise to fill that space. Anticipating and identifying risks and setbacks. Always being ready for crisis management. While the drug trade is no laughing matter, I would see this as being along the same vein as those mafia management sims, so fair play I guess, but it does look like a good tycoon entry. Always be ready to take the bullet for your team. We offer competitive salary, relocation to tropics, and medical insurance after probation period. My love for deck builders continues to grow with the awesome Neuro Deck Psychological Deck Builder, one which plays with fears and emotions as you face your phobias and mental challenges. Some great art and animation of the manifestations of these psychological conditions, where you're using self care to combat these, so perhaps something that we could all learn from. The long in development management sim Mr. Prepper has somehow garnered a huge following, looking like it could be the next breakout hit where you play as a doomsday prepper who has to gather supplies and needs to hide out underground and to build a rocket to space. Without commenting on the extreme prepper subculture, the management portions of this seems decent, with the base building aspect being front and center, but for the amount of buzz this seems to be generating, it takes the number one spot. To see more of the big picture, check out these awesome videos and I will see you after the jump.